heating you up like a hot steel can of coffee out of a Japanese vending machine. It's DIA, or Dudes in Asia. What up, peoples? As always, this is David Hader. And this is David Nguyen, a.k.a. Nug McDuck. We're back in action on another great Tuesday, December 11th. The weather in Japan is cooling down, but we're heating up. Absolutely. Feels like we're being, beginning to find our groove here, buddy. Xmas is That's two right. weeks out, and New Year's is three weeks out. Man, 2018 flew by pretty fast, dude. It sure did, man. It sure did. But, you know, I think, like, when you're kids, you know, you, you just go to school every day, and this things drag on forever. And then once you're growing up, you got a lot of crap to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, because there's like a like at least a season and a cycle of just like you know school off and stuff like that. But once you're an adult, man, there is no summer or anything else. <laughs> it's just work. Yeah, pretty much work and laundry. Mm-hmm. And if you got kids, <laughs> your kids' laundry. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Joking, man. Yeah. So what's up, man? Anything new with you? What's going on this week, man? Uh, man, I have listening to David Goggins' audiobook called Can't Hurt Me. Dude. Really? David and, Goggins, you say, huh? Yes. Amazing book. So, well, audiobook. So, the, the different thing about his audiobook compared to the book is, like, um, his audiobook actually is, like, reading the book and then, like, a podcast slash interview. So, they go way further in depth after mm-hmm. what they discuss. And the stories oh, he share see. almost seems like almost unbelievable at times, but you know he's just breaking it down. The guys are actually like um, showing what they do. Um, so yeah, he, you know they're it's just explaining everything that's going on that happened and man his life was just crazy so right now he's uh talking about his like his navy seal training it was just like brutal anyway this is like super inspiring but then he also challenges you to like do things that you hate um just like write like be honest with yourself if you're fat write down your fat and you know have accountability mirror so it's a uh, pretty inspiring so i'm actually trying all the challenges right there he's doing so pretty because of that i'm like pretty like hardcore back into fitness i'm actually like nine days in a row right now every uh, nice morning man. i get up like at f- like anywhere between like three and four Ooh, do shit. some dude i crash like at eight or nine though <laughs> like come <laughs> wow. eight o'clock dude i'm just like eyes are heavy and then usually by nine o'clock i'm just like out like a light so um, yeah, but see, maybe you go to sleep earlier, but you feel better throughout your day, though. Yeah, um, there's a there's a little there's a little crash, but um, so yeah, there's a little crash in the afternoon, but. Um, I've learned to just kind of like mentally just get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah, it's in my mind. Just fucking move forward. Man, like hearing all that uh, like Navy SEAL talk is like, dude, just push yourself. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, man, I used to watch a lot of the Navy SEALs uh, training stuff, you know? What, what was the show that you watched? Uh, it was that BUDS, like B-U-D-S, like class of whatever. I don't yeah. remember the name. No, because it's funny because that's exactly what he watched that motivated him. Oh, interesting, man. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he watched. He's just because he was, I think he had attempted to do it before and kind of failed out. And then, like, he watched that show, just like, you know what? Like, at that time, he did, like, he was like 300 pounds. And Ooh, in order shit. to qualify for, like, uh, Navy SEAL training, he had to drop 100 pounds in three months. Holy shit, man. Motherfucker did it too. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, it's kind of funny because you're the, you're the one that introduced me to that show. And then to hear him kind of talk about it's like, oh, crap, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Well, see, I watched that show, and then, like, you know, when people complain about having to do, like, an extra report or something, then I'll bring that up. 
<laughs> exactly, dude. So. But you know, it's like, oh, so like your job is hard, huh? You get to sit in a nice office and it's heated, and like you can go take a break whenever you feel like it. Yeah. Like man, there's motherfuckers that are like getting wet and sandy, and like digging a hole and filling it up that ain't slept for three days. Like exactly. I think you can do this. <laughs> exactly, dude. Exactly. So yeah, that's uh, that's reading right now is just like just trying to just like you know unleash the beast and get back into fitness. So. What about you, man? What's new with you? Yeah, you know, uh, just staying on my grind, you know. Uh, as you know, I, I like to volunteer in the community, you know, try to give back a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, like, this last Sunday, uh, we had the big Christmas party with the volunteer group Santa and Friends out in Nagoya. Mm, nice. Like, it was, it was pretty interesting, man. Like, last year I went, and they went to a big, like, it's, I don't know, it kind of be like having a Christmas party in, like, Long Beach Arena. You know, mm. it's like the, the Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium. That's where they have the sumo tournaments, you mm. know. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, man. Like, for, uh, like, my responsibility, I was working with the pinata crew, you know. <laughs> it's me and my me and my uh, girlfriend made a pinata. But it was funny because, like, you know, like, she's from Mexico. Like, you know, we're from California. We know about pinatas. Like, other people, like, from Canada. Like, other people are from, like, Europe. Or like Japan, they're like, we don't know about this pinata, you know. Mm-hmm. But then what was funny is like the the lady whose idea it was to make pinatas, like she was from Mexico too. And then like a week before, like the actual thing, she was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sick. I got the chicken pox. I can't go anymore. <laughs> like, well, damn. <laughs> damn, you know. And uh-huh. so I guess somebody else like took it over. But then it was like a Japanese person didn't didn't know what the fucking pinata was, you know. Exactly. So like yes, this is what we're going to do. I'm like you shouldn't do that. Let's do it this way. And they're like, but we want to do it this way. I'm like, listen to the gringo and the Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we did it their way at first. You know, and then like I think like a kid like hit me in the leg with a wiffle ball bet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was all right. Yeah, and then what was funny though is uh, the the lady that couldn't make it, she made a pinata, mm-hmm. like that looked like a minion you know oh, nice. so it's like yeah the top part was round it had like kind of like a goggle on it that was actually like 3d like it stuck out you know like made of construction paper yeah like it had like arms and it had like kind of like you know pants you know like how they have it yeah and so like it was just funny as hell dude like these kids go up and they smack the minion and, like one kid smacks the shit out of it and its pants fly off you know it's <laughs> Fucking minion up there, no pants on, you know. And then the next kid comes up and he fucking hits it like Shomenuchi, man, like Kendo. Yeah. I don't know if you watch like Walking Dead, man. Like he neganed his ass, you know. <laughs> and then like the the paper eye like just fell off and it's like hanging, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn. <laughs> like the next kid comes up, takes his arm off, like, plah. I'm like, man, this is kind of violent, man. But these kids are fucking loving it, you know. <laughs> are they? They're still blindfolded or no? No, no blindfolds, man. Just okay. let them come up and swing on it, man. Oh, but nice. <laughs> it's funny, though, too, because then, like, you know, the baseball player comes up, and he just smacks the shit out of it. And it's like he hits it, and the pinata is so hard that, like, it doesn't break in half. It just breaks off of, like, what was holding it up. Yeah. And then all the kids just, like, bum rushing and rip it apart, man. They're like, give me them goods. I'm getting the candy. <laughs> yeah. Shit was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Sounds fantastic, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, it's always a good time. Um, it's kind of interesting because at the orphanages in Japan, like, some of them don't have parents. You know, like, their parents died. Uh, maybe some of them, when they were born, they were given up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, kind of mm-hmm. like safe surrender. Yeah. And then some of them have parents, but they're not, like, fit parents. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't ask too much about it when we're there. And it's, like, everything from you know very young kids like three four years old like all the way up to like about to graduate high school like 17 18 you know mm-hmm. yeah it was a good time man you know went to uh eat some chicken wings after went up to hooters nice had a good time is it the same quality as back home i don't know i haven't been to hooters in a long time back home based on my past experiences i'd say it's better out here no, oh, nice. But the only thing I'll say though is that they don't put enough sauce on anything. For sure, you know. For so sure. yeah, but then you have an option to order extra sauce, you know. Mm-hmm. And then usually you go for one of the spiciest ones, you know. And like a lot of Japanese people just can't handle spice. Mm-hmm. So like the lady's bringing it out and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like trying to keep her face away from it. 
you know. Yeah. Had me like a, a Grey Goose Martini for 900 yen, about like nine bucks. And then I had me a MGD. <laughs> nice. And I, I, I don't drink the MGD because it's good. I drink it because it's nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that was on Sunday. And then like yesterday, uh, that uh, gymnastics team from Canada came out here. So like come to find out, this is like their pre-training, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to try to qualify for the uh, Olympics in 2020. Mm-hmm. And they're actually like practicing like out here like in Yokaichi. I'm like, well, that's kind of random. But hey, how about that? Yeah. You know, but uh, and it was crazy, too. Like the guy who's the head of the team actually used to live in Long Beach back in the day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like he his wife's Canadian. He met his wife when he was a sailor down in Long Beach, you know, like a, a while ago. And we used to still have the Navy base out there, mm-hmm. you know, and it was like up on the uh, up on the top floor of the hotel, like the biggest hotel in town, you know, it was very chill, man. But. You know, basically, they were just talking about the differences between, like, Canadian schools and, like, Japanese schools. Like, we're kind of working as, like, volunteer translators between, like, the Japanese kids and the Canadian kids. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but there's always going to be one kid, right, that knows, like, some English is going to try to say something funny. Yep. But then they don't know how to pronounce it either, right? Like, they're just seeing it online. Mm -hmm. So this kid, like, he just, he leans into, like, a Japanese kid, he leans over to the Canadian kid. He's just like, (coughs) penis. <laughs> yeah, and that kid's like, "What? What are you saying?" He's just like, <clears throat> "Penis." <laughs> you know, he's like, "Pen is." He's like, "Penis." <laughs> you know, the fucking kids, man. Yeah, you got love kids, dude. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, the, they're gonna come out tomorrow and do like kendo. Oh, and it was yeah. funny because I was like, "You guys ever do martial arts?" So like, I did like taekwondo, and I was like five. I'm like okay i'm like yeah we're gonna do kendo they're like we don't know that what is that i'm like well you basically put on armor and you get to smack each other with the stick they're like can you hit each other hard I'm like hell yeah you should hit each other hard I'm like i'm going to destroy you <laughs> yeah. nice yeah so we'll have a good time but yeah, yeah I, I feel like that's it man other than that just kind of getting ready for the end of the year you know mm-hmm. head, gonna be heading back to the states mm-hmm. have a good time nice nice so shall we continue to our part two episode of travel tips to japan you know what man i'm kind of tired it's gonna do it for tonight dog i'm checking <laughs> like no, no no i'm messing it up uh, yeah that man, does let's it. do that <laughs> oh, no. let me let me take a sip of my lemon sour here i'm gonna put a picture up on the lizine too <laughs> And then it tastes like the people look on the can. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. You know, last week uh, we talked about travel tips. And I have so many that we couldn't get to them all without having like an hour-long show, you know? Mm-hmm. Or maybe we just talked too much beforehand. I think it's the first reason I say it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of That's ground to cover, good. though. It was definitely a lot, yeah, a lot of ground yeah. to cover. Yeah, you know, we like to give you a little update of what's happening and then hit you with the info, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, last week, <clears throat> talked uh, about my tips, answered a few questions from my friend Mia. So, yeah, what you got for me today, man? What you, what, uh, what you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start it. Uh, so, is it difficult to travel outside of Tokyo without like good grasp of uh, Japanese language? You know, it it can be. Like, there's people that live out here though too that don't got good grasp of Japanese language. You know, so mm-hmm. it's like they make it. Um, it might be tough. Like anywhere you go, like usually, like you know, especially like trains and stuff, there will be signs in English. You know. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, if you go to restaurants, they might have an English menu. But, uh, like, the further you go out into the boonies, yep. that's when it, like, starts to kind of go away, yeah. you know? And then, like, you'll be surprised, though, too, man. Just, like, where you go in your travels, like, you'll just meet somebody that, like, for no reason is just, like, an English master. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> like, that's just what they're into. Like, I remember when I first came to Tokyo, like, I was on the subway. And this guy just came up to me. He's like, hey, man. I'm like, hey. He's like, so, you know where you're going? I'm like, I do. He's like, all right, man. Enjoy it. I was like, thank you. 
<laughs> you know, just like some some old Japanese dude, you know. Yeah. Um, one thing I recommend though is to definitely like get like a a Japanese dictionary, like you know, on your phone or like use like Google Translate. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it helps too if you have something that works offline. Yeah. So uh, one thing I recommend is called well, I use it on uh, Android. I don't know if they have it on iPhone, I'm but it's called sure. J. Yeah, J E D. Mm. And I think it's like Japanese English Dictionary. Mm -hmm. And so that works offline, and you just pop in anything you want, and then like the translation comes up, you know? Nice. Uh, Something else they have too is that Google Translate can actually like translate stuff through the camera. With like a 50% accuracy. I bet, yeah. It's not that good, but it's better than nothing, you know? Yeah, because I've tried it with uh, Korean out here. It's just like, because. Yeah, Korean is like 100% Korean. Like, uh, I'll go to the Korean stores and try to buy some food. Yeah. Like, you know, they tell you how to make the soup. And it's on uh-huh. uh, Korean. So I try to whip out the camera. Uh, okay. It's just like, ooh, this is not helping. <laughs> it's like, break soup in half. <laughs> Stick the soup in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was not pretty. It was not helpful at all. Okay. But you yeah. can just look at the pictures and figure it out. Oh, for sure. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's part of the thing too is like you know the Vietnamese you can like read what the alphabet letters are so at it's least, easier to look up yeah at least yeah yeah like Japanese man it'll just be like some symbols you're like fuck if I know you know what I mean yep exactly yeah and uh, yeah I'd say too like if you think about when you'd have to use Japanese like it's probably going to be when you're buying something right or like mm-hmm. when you want to eat out mm-hmm. so uh, you know if you're going to like order your food like, it helps to try to, like, talk slowly, you know what I mean? Even if people speak English, like, their English probably isn't, like, fantastic, you know? Mm-hmm. So you got to slow it down a little bit. And, like, you know, like, one thing is, like, when you go to McDonald's out here, you know? Like, they they have a menu in front of the register, you know? And so you can look at what you want. Like, it has pictures, mm-hmm. you know? And so you can kind of, like, point at something and then hold up, like, the number you want of that, you know what I mean? Yep. It's like if you want like two burgers, just be like this burger, Deuce. two, <laughs> you know, yeah. And then like you know, gestures go a long way too, man. Like you want something to drink, like you know, drink, drink, you know, like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It it helps out, man. But uh, something I've seen a lot of people do, and I'm sure you have too, is like they'll just like talk louder. You yeah, know? <laughs> and that does not help. You know? No, it doesn't. It's like their hearing ain't the problem. It's that you're in a country and you don't know their language. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Um, yeah. And then another thing, too, is like the, you know, a lot of times Japanese people know a lot of English words, but the way they pronounce them is like katakana. Yeah. You know? Oh, let me see if I can read this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, here we go. This room, is Nuggie's. Right? Yeah, yeah. Nuggie's <laughs> katakana quiz. The first one is hotel. How do you say it? Hoteru. Yeah, hoteru. Hoteru. Oh, oops, I gotta say yeah. it too, huh? Hoteru. Uh, hoteru. <laughs> no, no. Who? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Here's the next one. Try to say McDonald's. Maku. Do. Dona. Ru. Oh, I can't remember that last one. <laughs> Maku. That last one is. You just said it before. I, I was oh, pretty much almost there. Yeah, yeah, it's in the word you said that last symbol before. Ma-ku-do <laughs> na ro ru no do do yes. Oh. So the way they say it is makuto na ru do. Wow. So you'd be like, hey, where's McDonald's? Be like, huh? McDonald's. And they're like, what? And I'm like, makuto na ru do. They're like, ah, uh, achi, it's over there. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. All right, one more for you. Now, Nuggie, say hamburger. Hanbaga. Subarashi. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I remember, like, yeah, so I had to try to say McDonald's to a taxi because, like, every time I get drunk, like those late night drinking days, I go to McDonald's. And uh, nice. <laughs> I'm always just like, McDonald's. Like, what? McDonald's. Nope. It's like that yellow M that's open 24 7 that sells him American hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get it. <laughs> yeah. I have to break it down in like Vietnamese is like that yellow M over by Benton uh, Market, twenty four seven. 
American hamburgers. Oh, okay. I was like, all right, thank you, man. <laughs> like, then what the fuck do they call it, man? Yeah, I just every time they tell me how they say it, I, it's just in one ear and out the other, you know? Because yeah, it sounds like the Mc- same to me. It sounds the same. It's like McDonald's or something like that. It's just like, you know. So. I know how they say the same. No, not. Yeah. Okay. Well, second question I have about Japan is, what should I avoid if I'm uh, there? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff to do. But I feel like with any vacation, you have like a certain amount of time to do what you really want, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I don't know. This is just my preference. I don't like to go to places when they're super crowded, you know. Mm. Like, it's going to be tough to get around. You're going to spend a lot of time waiting to do stuff, you know, waiting in line. So I recommend like trying to avoid places during like peak like travel times, you know. Mm-hmm. Like if you're coming to Japan, like say over like New Year's, like everybody is off of work on new year's you know like probably starting like the 28th everybody's gonna be off at work Mm -hmm. but like everybody's still working around christmas time Mm -hmm. you know so that's like a good time to go to like theme parks you know like Mm -hmm. disneyland in tokyo like universal studios in osaka Mm -hmm. or like really big kind of attractions you know um you know something else too and I, i know i'm probably gonna catch some flack for saying this but like for me like if you go to like one or like two castles it's pretty cool but some people want to go to like every castle and they're all pretty much the same Mm. you know Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean definitely check out like a castle i feel feel you on that because like in vietnam was like you go to one temple they're pretty much all the same (laughs) yeah and another thing too is like some castles with like you know you can walk around it and it's free Mm -hmm. and then you have to pay a little bit of extra money to go into it right Mm mm-hmm but then sometimes you go in and there's like not a whole lot there you know Mm. Uh, some of the castles like you can actually go all the way up to the top you know and kind of like take in the view so that's when it's worth it you know Mm -hmm. to me I think yeah yeah Um, yeah let's see anything else to avoid oh uh, do you know about ryokans no I don't so like a ryokan is like a traditional Japanese inn and they're actually very nice like Like, go to the Ryokan. Don't avoid the Ryokan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, like hospitality, like to the max, you know? But the one thing I don't like there are the breakfasts. You know, like, I don't know, man. They're just like kind of bland, like not that hearty. Mm -hmm. Like, eh, you know, I could pass on it. Like, maybe try it one time, you know? Give it a shot. But, like, once you've had it in one place, you kind of had it everywhere. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of the times too like it's optional but they they won't really tell you that yeah you know like i went to one ryokan like in nara and like we checked in like so when are you coming for breakfast I'm like oh, actually we won't be going for breakfast we have to like a train to catch we're like no we're just gonna go to mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh very well <laughs> you know that's how you want to play <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh another thing too like you know sometimes especially like if you're in tokyo like Rapungi or kabuki cho like some of the club districts you know Mm -hmm. uh watch out for some of the shady clubs you know and like you know a lot of times they have dudes they'll try to pull you into bars and clubs you know Mm -hmm. um like in uh i've never been out to rapungi but like in kabuki cho Mm -hmm. they have like these dudes man and like you know they look like a black dude from america but they're actually like from africa Mm -hmm. and so let's come to like hey what's up man i'm like hey how's it going and then they're just like, hey, happy new year, brother. And like they shake your hand and they get all nice. Like, so you want to come to this club? Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I've heard like stories of people getting ripped off. Like they don't ask how much the things are, you know, and, like the beer ends up being like really pricey mm-hmm. or there's like some kind of crazy cover charge that uh, nobody told them about, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like you just really want to make sure that you see how much things cost before you go in. You know? it, it sounds a lot like uh, I think there's the same issue in Bangkok. Like I've heard that too. Maybe yeah, not exactly as bad as, as Bangkok, dude. Yeah, not I think Bangkok bad. is just like ridiculous, dude, about that. Yeah, yeah I've heard some people running up like three, four hundred dollar tabs and shit. Just, just for yeah, just for walking in, man. And they have like you know super beefed up security too. It's kind of like yeah. They, I didn't, yeah, yeah I didn't think Japan had it, but you know, I guess every place got shady spots. Yeah, it can happen, dude. Okay, so to flip that question, what should I, like, what do I gotta do while in Japan? 
Um, man, I think you definitely gotta eat the food, man. Like, Japan is very much like a food culture, and like mm-hmm. eating out is pretty cheap compared to other countries, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, stuff like ramen, like sushi, sashimi, like, and then wherever you are, man, just like their local specialties, man, you gotta try those out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you also gotta check out the convenience stores, man. That's like the lifeblood of Japan. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then like wherever you happen to be like you know hop online do some research see if there's any like festivals or local events you know okay a lot of the time like it's free and it's a good way to have like a cultural experience um you know japan's also famous for like its transportation and stuff man so you know take the trains like take a bus take a boat take a taxi you know like it's pretty dope mm-hmm. um also kind of along the lines of like eating like you know japan has a lot of uh, izakayas kind of like traditional bars you know Mm-hmm. Uh, some have the all you can drink option but maybe they won't list it on the english menu you mm-hmm. know yeah you probably will have to know japanese like ask about it uh but either way man if you just have like a couple beers like you know a couple of, like local specialties like you could try some weird food too if you feel like it you know it's of out there yeah get like some horse sashimi mm. <laughs> like and rare chicken you know <laughs> yeah uh, something else that's cool too are kind of the local coffee shops man like they usually have like a morning set and like you'll get like coffee with like some toast and like a little salad you know Hmm. it'll be more dessert type kind of like coffee with like uh like cinnamon toast you know oh nice yeah and they're usually like they have that around breakfast time it could be anywhere about 300 to 500 yen and like if you find like the super local spots dude like it's just like some old dude's house and he just like opens it up for coffee in the morning you know that's awesome yeah, and you walk in, he'll probably be like, he'll have like the news on TV, and like he'll be like listening to like some old timey Japanese music on the radio. <laughs> He's probably just like chief and a stogie and reading the newspaper, you know. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Japan has a lot of like really good museums, like zoos and like aquariums and stuff. So yeah, wherever bet. you happen to yeah. be, yeah, check one of those out. Um, also, like you know, you're probably gonna do some shopping. Be sure you kind of like go to a mall and like the hundred inch shops man mm-hmm. and another place you can shop too they're called a shoten guy i think like if you translate it's like shopping arcade mm. but it's kind of like a covered area where there's stores on both sides you know oh nice and then yeah other than that dude like don quixote is crazy i don't know if you know what that is but it's kind of just know. like a crazy walmart dude oh okay yeah it's nuts man they have like everything dude and like i remember the first time i went to don quixote i tried to to look at everything they had right because that's what i do i go to a store and i go up and down every aisle and kind of make a note of like what they had you know yep i did that over there man i got like halfway through i got a headache i had to leave (laughs) yeah there's like too much shit dude damn that's too much shit yeah it's dense bro oh nice yeah yeah but yeah it's definitely crazy man Mm -hmm. yeah i think that does it for my gotta do's man yeah all righty then man does uh does that wrap it up for today you know what i think that might man i had some more stuff to talk about but maybe i'll just turn that into a blog post you know what i mean yeah i guess so (laughs) yeah man well that does it for another fresh fresh episode of dudes in asia this is the second part of our travel series on japan so be sure to check out last week's episode and uh we're gonna have a blog post coming up even more travel tips nice yeah thanks for tuning in for this episode of dudes in asia uh we should probably do a vietnam episode soon yeah yeah definitely like i I was thinking maybe like one about traveling to vietnam yeah and then for my own purposes one about moving to vietnam sounds like a plan yeah we'll do that soon probably uh next year for sure okay so that this is noog mcduck signing out be sure to check out our blog at dudesinasia.blogspot.com also, hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash dudes in Asia. If you have any other questions about traveling in Japan, Vietnam, Asia in general, or just life in general, you know, send us a message, man. We'd love to hear from you. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter. Search for at David Hader. That's at D-A-V-I-D-H-8-R. Peace out. Peace out.